Keep inside. Let me know you're here. All of his life will be cross over the atmosphere. I need to know things are going to look up. Time is drowning in a seas filled from a cup. There's no in no safe place, no place to, to put my head. When you can feel the world shake from the world's out of sight. Now, calling all angels. How? I'm calling all you angels. I won't give up. You don't give up. 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 TV set just keeps it all from being clear. I want a reason for the way things have to be. I need a hand to help build up some kind of hope inside of me. Thank you, Mojo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure to be here and be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you for playing for us again. Different environment, but um, we're so happy to have you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our Community Impact Awards Ceremony. My name is Wendy Stapleton, and I'm the chairwoman of the Greenwich International Film Festival. Um, we are thrilled to have uh, almost 1,000 attendees with us tonight, our most ever for a gift Zoom event. Thank you to Fairfield County Look for co-hosting this event with us, to the gift team, especially Ginger Stickle, our executive director, Samantha Ryan, and my co-founder and our director of programming, Colleen Duvier. Thank you to our sponsors for the event tonight, Saks Fifth Avenue, um, and keep an eye out for Barney's at Saks, which is coming soon. Finally, thank you to our grant committee who spent countless hours reviewing the 75 grant applicants and helping us to select the winners you will hear from shortly. The past 12 months, this, the world has faced unprecedented challenges. Industries have tumbled, millions of people across the world have lost their lives and millions more their access to basic healthcare, food, shelter, and education. The mental health toll this pandemic has taken on those caring for the most vulnerable amongst us has been staggering. The Greenwich International Film Festival, since its inception, was created in order to help share people's stories and inspire us to action. Art, in its most powerful form, is not only a tool for expression, but healing. 
That is what we hope to do a bit of this evening. Fairfield County uh, and the greater Connecticut area rallied around the film festival from our beginning seven years ago, when we were just a couple of moms with an idea to start a world-class film festival. With the support of the community and the passion and perseverance of our dedicated staff and hundreds of volunteers, we made our dream a reality and you all showed up. Just as you believed in us, this event is a way for us to say that we believe in you. We believe in your capacity to make our community and our world a better place for all who inhabit it. Shortly, we'll hear from the inspiring individuals who run the six grant recipient organizations, after which we will announce the winner of our $10,000 Community Choice Award. So stick around. And now it is my great honor to introduce the governor of our state, Governor Ned Lamont. Hey, Wendy, you uh, beautifully said it. Hey, Mojo, that was wonderful, thanks. And uh, look in the backdrop as you were singing, um, you can eat outdoors at the Delamar in February. It looked pretty comfortable to me. <laughs> um, and, and Wendy, look, it's been one tough year in this country and in this world. And uh, we need the arts, we need music, we need celebration um, more than ever before. Um, you pointed out one of the weird things is the world has gone a little bit virtual, hasn't it? We've had more of our schools open for in-person learning than just about any state in the country, but we still have 250,000 kids who are learning virtually. And uh, we've got to do a better job of getting them back into um, the swing of things. The isolation has been tough. Uh, and when it comes to health and healthcare, uh, or kept our hospitals open, but telehealth has been a, a big piece of what we've been trying to do is we reach out to underserved communities and get left behind, especially in a pandemic, and do everything we can to take care of them. You know, a little bit of maybe good news for a state like Connecticut. Um, people realize you don't always have to be in New York City five days a week, even if your job is there. We've had tens of thousands of people move to Connecticut and that's telecommuting. And I guess when it comes to the arts, um, we realize that you know, that has gone virtual as well. I'm, um, I was struck by that cartoon I listened, watched the other day. It said, hey, mom, I met, I've finished Netflix. What am I going to do now? We've had <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of opportunity to um, love the arts and love video and love movies and love streaming and love the theater. And I want you to go back to the theater. It's safe and do that cautiously, but, but go back as well. And uh, I think that's what the um, Greenwich International Film Festival is about. Um, it's about giving hope. It's about giving back. It's also recognizing amazing artists who uh, deserve to be um, recognized and given a shot. And uh, if there's one thing I can say about um, 2020, 2021, it's tough in many ways, but it's also the renaissance of um, movies and video, which you now call content. Um, True here in Connecticut as well. Um, you know, people think that Connecticut is sort of Southern Connecticut's finance. Uh, I want you to know that we used to have the largest trading floor in the world over at the UBS building right next door in Stanford. And today it is becoming the largest digital production studio in the world. So uh, Greenwich International Film Festival is part of what we're trying to do to um, remind people how uh, Connecticut is changing as well and, uh, and what that means. Um, I'd urge um, some of the would-be film producers, uh, think about how we tell the story of Connecticut. I mean, we've got some great movies, that, you know, uh, Mystic Pizza, that sort of told a fun story about Connecticut and the Gilmore Girls, if you remember that, or maybe you watched with your kids a little bit, but um, we're also defined a little bit by uh, Gentlemen's Agreement and Stepford Wives. So I'd love to come <laughs> up with a, a movie that talks about the best of what makes uh, Connecticut a special a special place. And, um, you know, I, I'm a movie buff, I got to tell you. Um, to Catch a Thief, I saw what that did for Monaco. Didn't everybody want to go to Monaco? So do, do that movie for Connecticut. But really, this is about uh, giving back. And this is about uh, raising money for uh, people in a time of need. Um, a lot of our focus for um, philanthropy often is focused on New York and New York City. I appreciate your, your remembering uh, Connecticut. And uh, look, as Wendy said, uh, it's extraordinary the need we have right now. The number of people who are not just without work, but desperate for food. The number of kids who have been isolated and left behind. Uh, the sense of urgency and isolation that's there. What we need in terms of our social services, reaching out and getting people back. And we are getting back. Um, 
our infection rate is going down, our schools are opening up, our vaccinations are uh, strong. Most people over the age of 75 are vaccinated. Soon we'll be announcing this coming week, 65 and over. Looking at the people on the screen, I'm afraid you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because it's sort of age uh, specific, but um, we are making progress. And uh, the arts is so much a part of uh, what it does for our soul, what it does for our optimism, what it does for our hope, how we express our feelings and how you do that by supporting a lot of very, very needy causes right here in the state. So I think with that, it's my opportunity to uh, introduce to you Ginger, who's the COO, and will tell you about the rest of the uh, strategy for the evening. Thank you, Governor Lamont. Um, it is our honor to use GIFT's platform to harness the power of film to serve the greater good for causes that relate to basic human rights, education, the environment, and healthcare. Um, as, as the governor said, there are many needs that exist right now, and we're able to offer support through our first ever Community Impact Awards, in large part due to our board, supporters, and sponsors from the past. Among this group, we are especially thankful to partner with WABC-TV, our network partner for the past five years. I'm happy to introduce tonight's MC, Amy Fries, meteorologist for WABC-TV's Eyewitness News. Amy is one of only a few women in the world who has earned the prestigious Certified Broadcast Meteorologist Accreditation from the AMS. Her work has earned her several Emmy Awards. She holds a master's degree in environmental sciences from the University of Pennsylvania and a BA in communications from Brigham Young University. Thank you for being here with us tonight, Amy. Thank you. Thank you, Ginger, Wendy. Thank you, Governor. I really appreciate being here on behalf of WABC and Eyewitness News. And I have to start, of course, um, by saying, you know, we're in the business of community and telling community impact stories. So um, what you're doing tonight is right up our alley. So we really appreciate being a part of this partnership for the last uh, five years or so. And I'm lucky enough to be here tonight. I will say snow is coming for you tomorrow. So uh, Governor, you'll probably be very busy <laughs> tomorrow as we are uh, looking for maybe about three to six inches of snow uh, right there in Connecticut. So uh, winter weather continues around here. So I would be uh, amiss if I did not say a little bit about the weather as we got started. Um, one of the things I think is really incredible uh, about the Greenwich International Film Festival community is that you haven't forgotten community and you've got given back and gotten right back into the uh, grassroots of, of what makes communities great. And uh, when communities are great, that's when they produce great art. And so um, that's wonderful. $100,000 in grant funding is being given to six worthy charities in the Community Impact Awards. And I want to read from the list. Um, these charities provide so many critical um, supports to so many different issues. It's really an impressive list. Individuals with special needs, victims of sexual violence, those facing immigration issues, food, food insecurity, mental health challenges. There are so many different um, areas uh, so diverse in what they're covering with this grant funding. So it's, that's very impressive. Um, the groups include Abilis, Building One Community, Family Centers, uh, Filling in the Blanks, Food Rescue US, and the Rowan Center. Um, without further ado, I want to introduce the leaders of these amazing organizations so that they can say a few things about their organization. Um, we're going to start with Amy Montemiro. She's the president and CEO of Abilis. Amy's responsible for the planning and direction of their organiz organization's operation. She's committed to ensuring the health, safety, and quality of life for hundreds of individuals and families that are supported by her organization. Amy, take it away. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Amy Montemiro, CEO at Abilis, and I am so proud and thankful to represent the organization this year. We're celebrating a milestone anniversary of 70 years of providing quality care and supports for over 800 individuals with special needs and their families. Since 1951, uh, we have been offering early intervention services, advocacy, family education, along with a wide range of life services, including recreation, transition supports, job training, supported employment, and residential services to meet each individual's needs. We know that one size does not fit all, and what differ differentiates Ableist from other providers is our ability to meet, meet each person where they are, to help them to develop skills, self-worth, and to live the most independent life possible. On behalf of the entire Ableist organization, I want to thank the Greenwich International Film Festival for their, for their support 
and its recognition of needs for those with disabilities. This funding will have a great impact at ABLIS, providing for us what so many of us have missed this year, connectivity with the ones we love and continuity. The ability to see our family, friends, maintain the connections needed for good mental and emotional health. You will be providing tablets, smart TVs, and technology that will benefit over 230 ABLIS community members to be able to fully participate in daily virtual sessions, developing skills, maintaining friendships, and assisting with communication with family and friends. It has been truly a very difficult time for all of us and for many individuals with disabilities, trying to comprehend the devastating day-to-day -day change in our world has been extremely difficult. Our frontline staff continue to go above and beyond on a daily basis, working side by side with each individual to help them understand what has become our new normal. The technology we will be implementing will ensure the continuity for those we care for, preventing isolation, depression, anxiety, and to maintain the individual progress that they have made with the ABLIS support. So thank you again on behalf of the entire ABLIS organization for your support. And we look forward to sharing with you how this donation is truly making a difference in so many lives. Thank you, Amy, for all your leadership at ABLIS. We really appreciate you uh, being here tonight to share the mission and continue it on. Uh, next up, we have from Building One Community, the Executive Director, Anka Baderina. She is the um, leader for the Center for Immigrant Opportunity. Anka joined uh, this group in 2015, leading its research into employment trends, creating a workforce development program, and engaging key funders uh, to partner and expand their group. We welcome her tonight to talk a little bit about her organization. Anka. Thank you, Amy. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, building One Community, we're a fairly recent organization. We're turning 10 this year. Uh, our mission is to advance a successful integration of immigrants and their families into the larger community. And our programs and services are designed to educate, employ, and empower the immigrant community and engage the entire community at the same time. In nearly 10 years, we'll be turning a decade in June. Uh, we have served more than 11,500 immigrants from over 100 uh, countries. Uh, B1C provides vital services ranging from workforce development training and in 2020 we added an emergency financial assistance to support the community. Uh, we're beyond honored to be one of the recipients of the Greenwich International Film Festival's Community Impact Award in particular for our workforce development program. And with this award, uh, we look forward to offering immigrants more workforce development, training opportunities to strengthen their vocational skills and find jobs, especially as they have been hit really hard during the pandemic. So we're incredibly grateful, again, to the, Ing to the Greenwich International Film Festival for their partnership. And on behalf of our team and the community we serve and work with, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Anka, for your dedication to B1C. Uh, we appreciate you being here tonight. Next up, we have Emily Siegel. She's a senior social worker and clinical supervisor of Family Center School-based health centers. She's been providing individual, family, and group counseling at Stanford High School since 2001. Emily? Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's a privilege to be here representing Family Centers my name is Emily Siegel, and on behalf of all the people at the Family Centers Agency, I want to thank the Greenwich International Film Festival for their generous Community Impact Award. As a senior clinical social worker in the Family Centers School-Based Health Centers, I've had the privilege of working with students for many years at Stanford High School. Many of you know Family Centers as an organization that serves over 22,000 people in our community through a network of health, education, and human services programs. I'm proud to be part of an organization that immediately stepped up to meet the needs of the people we serve during the COVID-19 pandemic. Practically overnight, our team shifted to virtual platforms to ensure that the people we serve continued to have access to the programs they need while they were quarantined. While the world locked down, we stayed open. This was evident particularly in our mental health programs, which shifted to an entirely virtual setup within days. 
For myself, I remember packing up my office at the high school and locking the door on Friday, March 13th, and having my first telehealth visit with a student on Monday the 16th. This rapid adaptation to a new reality has meant that we've been able to offer much needed counseling to people in the comfort and safety of their own homes. We are so grateful to GIF for their generosity as this grant will enable family centers to continue providing mental health services at a time when they're needed the most. You have recognized how vital mental health services are in our community and for that, I and all my fellow clinicians sincerely thank you. Given the ongoing stress of this pandemic, the financial hardships it's bringing to our families and the impact on the emotional well-being of so many in our community, this grant will reach people in a meaningful way, helping them to find support in a still uncertain future. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Uh, the, the, the passion behind working with the young people and doing that work around has really been so critical uh, during the pandemic. Next up, we have Shawnee Knight, the co-founder and co-president of Filling in the Blanks. What began with the Connecticut chapter of Blessings in a Bam Backpack has grown into an organization based on Knight's strong sense of social responsibility to nurture the community's needy children and to inspire, inspire others to do the same. Shawnee, we welcome you tonight. Thank you so much for having me here. I want to thank everyone at the Greenwich International Film Festival for inviting Filling in the Blanks to participate this evening and for the grant award. The grant will allow us to continue our mission by providing funds to purchase food for our weekend meal program, which is essential. This evening's event is raising awareness to childhood hung hunger, something that so many are facing in our communities. And, beyond, and be on behalf of everyone at Filling in the Blanks and the children we serve, we are grateful and humbled to receive this. I am excited to share a little bit more about Filling in the Blanks with you. We started in 2013 when we learned a great need in our community. There were over 32,000 children right in our backyard that struggled to get enough food on the weekends. This was unimaginable. So my friend and co-founder, Tina Kramer, and I decided to take action and do something. Our goal was to bridge the gap between school-provided weekday meals and provide nutritious, easy-to-prepare food on the weekends to children year-round. With the help of friends and family, we got to work and started the weekend meal program at one school with 50 kids. We worked out of a living room with volunteers, friends and families, assembling bags of food, loading our cars and delivering weekend meal bags. This was pretty easy with only 50 kids. One thing you should know about Tina and I is that we can't say no when there's a child in need and 50 grew to 600, and 600 grew to 1,200, and we outgrew the living room and had to find a warehouse. And I am incredibly proud of what a volunteer-led organization has accomplished, growing from 50 kids at one school to approximately 3,200 kids in eight towns at 63 locations. We would not have been able to achieve our mission without the support of our volunteers and community. Seven years ago, when we set out to tackle hunger in our backyard, we had no idea the journey we were beginning. Little did we know we would learn forklifts, supply chain management, and all of that would be our day to day. This past year has really highlighted food insecurity, bringing it front and center, and hunger is something that many people are facing for the first time. COVID called upon filling in the blanks to grow, stretch, and be nimble while many schools and businesses and organizations were temporarily shutting their doors, filling in the blanks worked overtime and we delivered more meals than ever. We were expecting to serve our millionth meal in January of 2021, but we ended up delivering that this past September. We were able to be a critical resource for a community in crisis. We know hunger is not going away and neither will we. Our community coming together has been critical to ensure children don't go hungry on the weekends, and our volunteers are crucial for our program to succeed. We love our volunteers. So if you are interested in getting involved, a little or a lot, go to our website, fillingintheblanks.org, and find out how you can get involved. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Shani, for uh, sharing that with us. Uh, literally filling in the blanks, right, during uh, the pandemic. Uh, next up, we have Carol Shattuck. She's the Chief Executive Officer of Food Rescue. She joined as a director in 2015. She became CEO in April 2018. She is committed to reducing widespread hunger and food waste in the United States. Carol? Thank you so much. Delighted to be here and delighted to share this stage, virtual stage with all of you. And our mission is to help end food insecurity and food waste in America. We were founded in Fairfield County 10 years ago in Norwalk and uh, we now are spread throughout Connecticut and actually around the country. So we operate at the intersection of hunger and food waste, and our core business is to receive donated food, surplus food, healthy food, and using volunteers to deliver it to agencies, social service agencies that feed the food insecure. And we've done, we've done it a lot, and we've done it over the 10 years, and as COVID became ever so present, it became apparent that we needed to step up uh, like Shawnee and find new ways uh, that we could bring more food into the mix for the food insecure. And what I always say is that there was a serious food insecurity problem before COVID and COVID has only exacerbated it and has really been highlighted for so many people that there is hunger everywhere in every community in Fairfield County and Connecticut and around the country. So we've been able in 2020, we delivered 2 million meals in Fairfield County alone. And we did this by building our communities. We have over 1400 volunteer food rescuers in Fairfield County. We have over 150 food donors and we have 148, I believe, agencies that we're delivering food to. So the need is great, and we knew that we needed to pivot to find new meals, and we were able to create new programs, including a emergency meal programs through community kitchens and restaurant meal programs. And so this wonderful grant from the festival will allow us to continue that into 2021, where the needs are not going away, and they're actually on the increase. So thank you very much. And we are always looking for volunteers also. And uh, if you have a car and you have 30 minutes or 40 minutes, uh, go to our website at foodrescue.us. You can sign up and I can assure you, you will find it very, very uh, heartening to help out your community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carol, for the invitation and uh, for sharing. We have uh, next up Sharon Walker Epps. She's the board chairman of the Rowan Center, um, Sexual Assault Resource Agency. It's in Stanford, Connecticut. Sharon? Oh, she's got her. Uh, Sharon, undo your mute real quick. If she gets under, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I'm also very honored to be representing the Rowan Center and to sit on the stage with all of the wonderful people. Um, the Rowan Center is a sexual assault resource agency. We cover all of the lower Fairfield County towns from Greenwich up to Weston. Um, our mission is to provide counseling and support services to victims of sexual violence and also to eliminate um, the purge of sexual assault through community-wide education programs. We strive to meet this mission in three different ways. First, um, we train state certified advocates. Um, these advocates go to the hospital with survivors of sexual assault. Um, they stay for the entire process, the forensic exam, the kit collection. Um, they'll stay for police um, interviews. They also will go to the court if somebody decides to prosecute. So that is a big part of what we do. They are available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, second, we, um, we also provide free crisis counseling for any Connecticut citizen who's been a victim of sexual violence or for their family members. So it's 12 free sessions, um, it's crisis counseling, totally meant to get people out of like a very difficult time in their life. Um, you can imagine with the pandemic, uh, we've been super busy in this area. Additionally, we, um, we educate and we educate in all of the schools, public schools, private schools. We're in all kinds of community centers. We teach kids from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade. We start teaching kindergartners with 
empathy, empathy, respect, and boundaries. You've probably seen kids doing like the, they go to class and they get to choose, like, do you want to give a fist bump? Do you want to give a hug? Um, that's teaching kids to be in control of their own body and their own space, and it's really important. And then when we get to middle school and high school, we get to more serious subjects. We start talking about consent. We start talking about sexting. Um, and additionally, we start talking about bystander awareness and Know Before You Go, which is a college program, getting kids ready to attend college um, and understand um, the landscape. Um, <clears throat> In our communities, we'll go absolutely anywhere to educate. Um, we go to police stations, we go to churches, we go to parent groups, um, we teach about sexual harassment, whatever we need to do to get the message out, we do it. Um, we are so um, honored by the Greenwich International Film Festival um, choosing us as one of their recipients. Um, I think that sexual assault is still a very difficult thing to talk about. And so the fact that we're shining a light on it and talking about it makes a big difference. One of our biggest issues is always finding survivors and, um, and letting them know that we're here and we're available because so many people are still afraid to find help. And so um, being honored like this gives us a chance to really talk about what we do and how we do it and how to get in touch with us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, it, really impressive, you guys, uh, hearing so much about your organizations in detail and also the leadership and dedication that all of you bring personally to the groups. Um, we have a panel here set up for us tonight, and I have a couple of questions. I think we've got maybe about 10 minutes or so um, that we could go through it. So I'm just going to throw out, but I thought, um, throw out the questions, then you can kind of chime in, make sure you unmute yourself. Um, but I think maybe. Um, one of the things we could start off by doing is sharing some stories maybe of someone from your organization that's benefited sort of falling in line with uh the way that the film festival is able to tell people's stories so if anyone wants to start off by telling even something that's happened recently or um in the history of the organization how someone's personally benefited that would be great I mean, I'll tell a story, and this is actually not about a food recipient or an agency, but it's about a volunteer. Uh, we were delivering food uh, to Danbury, and a gentleman raised his hand, and I believe he lives maybe in Milford, and he was working from home. He learned about what we did, and every day from Monday through Friday, he would drive to Danbury, pick up food from... Uh, a food donor, actually from Beringer Ingelheim, that was working as a community kitchen for us, and deliver it to two or three places in Danbury, and then he'd drive home. And then Tuesday, the next day, he'd get up and do it. And he talked so much about how, how to have the opportunity to give back during a, an emergency and a crisis like this, how much that means, meant to him. And obviously, it meant so much to the people receiving the food. Very, very impressive. There's so many volunteers that are making these organizations work too, which is, which is important. One thing that we all know is that during the pandemic, things have changed with charities. Um, a lot of you guys talked about the increase in, in, in need for your services, but I don't know if really the increase has been there for the giving and helping to support the organizations going when that need has increased. Um, maybe if you could just talk a little bit about how you have filled those gaps or where those needs are still um, missing because literally everything has changed from funding sources to people's ability to give as well. And also even, even the impact of volunteers being willing and able to step in. I'll just uh, like take that one. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Amy. Uh, and just because for us, we have been a service uh, oriented organization and we've never been an emergency type of organization as some of our partners here. And 2020 proved that we had to pivot to what we did and listen to the voices of our community. And I start rethinking where we can actually provide the, the, the best services where the needs is, is at the moment. So from one day to the next, we pivoted and we opened a, a, a B1C pantry. That was when the food supply chain was compromised, it was most needed. And that's what we did for a couple of months. And, and to your point, Amy, we couldn't have been done that without the community. The community that came brought the food, that donated, 
large amount of money that allow us to provide support in food and grocery and rental relief and so on. And the community that themselves brought the food to our program participants that were home bound because of COVID. So what is beautiful, as I see here the round, most of these organizations have partnered with us and we have partnered with you. So the beauty of an event like this is to talk about community. And I think that's what we have seen that, that's what I always think about the silver lining of, of this pandemic has been how we have been partnering deeper with many in the community and how the community really rallied together to, to serve the people that, that live in Fairfield County and Connecticut in general. Mm, thank you for that. Thank you. Amy, do you want to share anything um, to capitalize on that with Ableist? I was just actually going to say, really, it, it is the community uh, and the partnerships that we've developed. And, you know, for us, initially, it was, you know, keeping everybody safe and sheltering in place. And really, that was our initial reaction. And then to answer your question on the fundraising, we all shifted to a virtual platform. And, you know, we were able to do well this year. You know, we have an incredible team within the organization, but really our community stepped up in every way um, to help us make sure that we sustain ourselves and maintain the quality of services. We, we couldn't have done it without our partnerships. That's awesome. Does anybody have any big achievements that they want to share? Any um, headlines from the year? Any impressive statistics? Um, any success stories coming out of the organization that you want to share tonight? I would love to. Um, at family centers, um, we do work with everybody else who is on the panel. Um, I've referred students to most of these programs. Um, and this, this year, I think that the need was so great with all of our families. And I think that we were probably worried that the, the money wouldn't be there for them. But um, in fact, we uh, issued 1,800 mini grants to our clients, um, totaling over $642,000. And that was for rent and groceries and electricity. And it was just astounding at the generosity, despite the fact that this is you know, such a difficult time for everyone. So that was quite an accomplishment, I thought, and, and really shows the generosity of, of our community. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I don't want to go without letting know, the audience know really ways that they can get involved. I know you probably all have websites um, and you have programs where you can bring volunteers in. Is there more need for active service and being there in person? Is there more need for supplies or money? Um, how, can, how can people get involved? Well, at the Rowan Center, as I mentioned during my introduction, the way people can really get involved and the way I initially got involved was as an advocate. The 40-hour training program is very eye-opening and most people would find it to be super meaningful and really worth, worthwhile. Um, we have found the need for advocates to be even greater during the pandemic. I mean, we've all heard this stay safe at home you know stay safe at home stay safe at home but for many victims that is the last place that they are safe right and so we've had massive increases in hotline calls we've had massive increases in hospital calls um, so you know, at the Roman Center we really need um, volunteer advocates and um, we're always looking for that and of course anybody who wants to be involved in in any way in terms of like the board or fundraising events. I mean, we're, we're super, um, we're, we're really busy and we're really thankful for any help we can get. Amy, I would agree with that too. And at Filling in the Blanks, we've been really impacted by the lack of uh, volunteers that we're allowed to have in our space because of the limits of social distancing. And so that has greatly impacted us and we've had to come up with fun ways for people to get involved virtually. Um, although we do have small groups coming in um, so, you know, we have a Super Bowl can fundraising challenge going on. There's so many things that can be done virtually and we are always looking for volunteers. Um, we have the fund restaurants feed families people can participate in. We found a way to help support the restaurants and then also provide a gift certificate to the families in our program so they can go to a restaurant and have either a takeout or a meal. Um, so we have a ton of ways here too. And um, always social media awareness, I think, for all of our organizations is really important. Yes. Awareness, awareness, awareness is key. If you go home and tell five people about any of us, it's great. Yeah. 
uh, without going into great detail with each one of you, um, just by a show of hands, I'm wondering um, what connected you to the organizations that you work with. So if it was from some sort of close personal experience that got you involved, uh, give me a, a, a hand up. Most of the times that how, that's how it happens. So if people are out there and they've got the need or they have someone close to them who has the need, that's usually the first um, move that, that sends them in your direction. And quite honestly, um, when we do something like that, uh, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect of those um, actions really normally benefit much more than ourselves or our immediate circle. And um, that that's definitely evident from the work you guys are doing, um, doing things in, in your immediate vision line and then how that reaches out to the broader community is just um, really an immeasurable um, effect. So we thank you so much for the service that you're doing in Connecticut. And I will say well beyond because when you help one person or one family, um, it's really difficult to see the impact that that has long term, but we know that it is big. So um, thank you so much. I'm really grateful that I could be here with you guys tonight. I just want to extend the invitation that at WABC Television and Eyewitness News, it's our, our job to tell stories. Um, and so we invite you to share the stories of your success, of your needs, and so forth, so that we can be a voice for you in the community. And for the Greenwich International Film Festival, thank you so much um, for what you've been able to accomplish with one idea, taking it as a form of entertainment, and then broadening your horizon to have an impact in the community. Um, that's just such a meaningful thing that you can do. Congratulations to everyone uh, for getting their grants. And uh, without any further ado, I'm gonna bring um, Ginger back on because we're all kind of excited to hear the winner tonight of the Audience Choice Award. Ginger. Thank you so much, Amy, and thank you, WBC TV. Um, and congratulations to all of our grant recipients. We applaud the great work you're doing. Um, at Greenwich International Film Festival, we were inspired by the overwhelming number of grant submissions from deserving organizations throughout Fairfield County, and so decided to use our platform to bring attention and resources to support an additional 15 charities that we've named Give Community Champions. We invite everyone to make an impact and support these worthy organizations through donations and volunteerism. Um, Wendy and I will be sharing information about each of these organizations and then naming the winner of the Audience Choice Award, which will receive a $10,000 grant from Stapleton Family Foundation. Thank you for your votes. Uh, we received 800 of them. So uh, without further ado, um, we'll start by introducing the champions. First up, we had the Alzheimer's Association of Connecticut, which leads the way to end Alzheimer's and all dementia by accelerating global research, driving risk reduction and early detection and maximizing quality care and support for all. Um, next, the Avon Theater is a very special partner to GIF. Its mission is to preserve and operate the historic cinema by providing a culturally significant film, educational and programming palette, which draws patrons from all over our area. Circle of Care for Families of Children with Cancer provides practical, emotional, and financial support from their day of diagnosis through treatment and beyond. Their programs and services address the unique and challenging non-medical needs of pediatric cancer because they know kids need more than medicine to heal. Close to Kids of Fairfield County provides children on free and reduced price lunch program or in crisis, a shopping experience twice a year in a simulated store for a week's wardrobe for free. We were struck uh, by their simple yet important request to purchase new clothing for these children. The Greenwich Center for Hope and Renewal aims to transform lives and relationships through clinically excellent counseling in a discreet and caring environment. The, the pandemic has certainly increased the needs they fulfill. Greenwich Hospital's Circle of Hope program for nurses is a groundbreaking program developed at Greenwich Hospital by Rabbi Mary Jane Newman, and it works to create new frames of support and community as they address the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Greenwich Scholarship Association is committed to shaping a better future for graduating high school seniors by helping bridge the gap between what college costs and available student resources. Um, and personally, as the mother of a senior, I know what an important cause that is. Wendy? Thank you, Ginger. Um, we also have the Greenwich United Way, uh, as a community champion, which identifies unmet local health, educational, and self-sufficiency needs 
It raises awareness and support and works collaboratively with the community partners to initiate solutions and implement programs that have a lasting positive impact. Kids in Crisis's mission is to build healthy communities where children and families thrive through prevention, counseling, and crisis services available 24 hours a day. Partnership to End Human Trafficking's mission is to empower survivors with a path towards healing and independence through a long-term residential recovery program and employment in retail justice enterprise. REACH Prep provides access to transformative educational experiences that empower underserved high-achieving students to graduate from top colleges and emerge as the next generation of leaders. The Special Education Legal Fund levels the playing field in special education by providing resources and knowledge to families in need empowering parents to fully advocate for the special, their children in the special education process. The Connecticut Invention Convention's mission is to provide the students of Connecticut with opportunities to develop critical thinking and creative problem solving skills. Open Doors strives to make a direct impact in the greater Norwalk area by guiding every person in the cycle of homelessness towards housing stability. The YWCA Greenwich is dedicated to eliminating racism, empowering women, and promoting peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. At this time, I would like to thank all of you for participating. Amy, um, thank you so much. Um, I would also like to thank those uh, within the Greenwich Film Festival community who have stepped up to support these organizations through donations, including the Corella Family Charitable Fund, Kate and Jim Clark, the DeVere family, the Stapleton Family Foundation, the Stickle family, and the Stedden family. Um, and I would like to echo uh, Ginger's comment that if um, there's anything you can do in the way of volunteerism, financial support, please, we encourage you. Um, there is no too little, um, and it's all these little things uh, that make a really big difference. So thank you all for showing up um and for what you're gonna do for the community and with that i would like to announce the winner of the audience choice award uh as ginger mentioned we had 800 um people vote and with uh 100 um 100 votes it is the special education legal fund i think christine is on with us um the the ex executive director of the organization if you'd like to say a few words um hi guys thank you so much um, first of all, um, let me extend the deepest of thanks to the uh, Greenwich International Film Festival and particularly to Wendy Stapleton, Colleen DeVere, and Ginger Stickle. Um, you and the team at GIF have made the Greenwich International Film Festival the force that it is for philanthropy, the arts, and for our community. Thank you, of course, to our self, family, and friends who rallied and voted for us and made this possible, and we're so excited and thankful. And of course, a special shout out to Georgie Reyes, who has already spoken about and shared our mission on her UNICEF video better than I ever could. So uh, on behalf of the Special Education Legal Fund, our board of directors, and Ulrika Drinkall, my partner and co-founder, I would like to share my deepest thanks and gratitude for tonight. Raising kids is hard, but raising kids with special education needs is even harder. And raising these kids without resources is harder even than that. The special education system is complex and difficult, and even professionals in the system sometimes have, have trouble understanding it. Parents especially lose their way. When schools closed last year, we started calling and emailing our families. About half of them had lost their jobs. The other half had COVID in their own homes, and every single one of their children was struggling. We as a society don't yet know the true cost of the pandemic, but I will tell you that our families already do. These kids were struggling before COVID. After almost a year of vastly reduced special education instruction and services, which do not translate on a virtual screen, they have fallen even further behind with no prospect of catching up on their own in the near term. Special Education Legal Fund has provided over $320,000 in grants to families in Connecticut and Westchester County since our founding in 2018. These are the numbers. But what we actually do is support families who are falling through the cracks. We have been blessed to be able to provide this life-changing support to students that need access to the right and appropriate education. Thank you for helping us do that. And thank you for listening tonight and letting me share their story with you. 
Thank you and congratulations. Um, I want to give a special shout out at this time. Uh, I know Wendy said something at the beginning, but to Saks Fifth Avenue, um, our sponsor for the evening. They're opening a new store on Greenwich Avenue and um, we will be in touch with everyone soon with how uh, you can go and support Saks and a percent of proceeds will benefit Greenwich International Film Festival and um, our charity partners. Um, and at this time, Colleen DeVere, co-founder of GIF and director of programming, is going to say a few words about our upcoming uh, Social Impact Film Showcase. Maybe. Nope, <laughs> you're muted, Colleen. That's weird. It just went. I didn't even mute it. Huh. Um, well, first of all, thank you all for um, joining us tonight. This has been very inspirational. Um, I can't take a, a ton of credit for, um, for putting any of this together um, because I've been busy on the other side working on the creative part of the film festival to bring the stories to life um, about a lot of different um, themes that, that um, all of these organizations um, are, are working so hard um, to to bring attention to um and this year um you know we we've found films that deal with the environment with fair trade with sexual assault but one of the things that happens every year as we're looking at films is um a common theme and this year it it, it seems to be um a lot about mental illness and a lot about homelessness and um uh it's it's just it's it's very interesting to me how that always happens every year and and i don't go out looking for it but they're fantastic films from 10 different countries um there are 10 films in the program this year all incredibly socially impactful and the film festival will be running from february 18th through the 21st um, so I hope that you all consider uh, checking out these stories. They are very moving. And I think they're a really good way of helping us all reclaim a common humanity. Um, and that is something with, with everything going on in the world, um, with racial issues in the world and the pandemic and homelessness and all of these things, I think it's really important for us to to find you know how we can work together um so i i just wanted to commend wendy and my co-founder um ginger our executive director samantha ryan our office manager and my programming assistant this year um for their incredible work on putting this whole thing together and and all of the time um going through the grants and figuring out um what spoke the most to them this year um because it took a lot of um effort and they did a wonderful job i think all of your organizations are um incredible um i also wanted to thank uh, fairfield county look elaine and chi chi vina um for um hosting this tonight for their support every single year of this festival since the beginning um also to um to amy uh freeze for for moderating it you did such a wonderful job um and to sex of course um but thank you you're um you're all worthy of this um and i think your organizations are doing what everyone really needs right now which is a lot of hope so thank you very much <laughs> thank you all thank you and have a wonderful night night thank you night thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.